Hello, my name is Denis Pala. This is a pre-recorded presentation for the 2023 meeting for the Society for Mathematical Psychology. Here I'm going to present my current study titled Retrieving Dynamically and Effectively from Memory, a Recognition Memory Model with Dynamic Decision Mechanism. This is an ongoing study which is a part of my doctor of the thesis supervised by Associate Professor Asli Kulich. Here is my outline. Recognition is the ability to distinguish previously encountered items from new ones. The process models of recognition memory explain all these states of recognition uh, and suggest mechanisms of operation. Note that almost all the major models of recognition ignored the course of decision making and didn't account for the response time data until some extensions of these models are developed. In the current study, I have focused on retrieving effectively from memory one of the major models of recognition, and proposed an extension for the model uh, which accounts for the course of decision-making. Now I'd like to uh, briefly present you the uh, retrieving effectively from memory, or in short, RAM models. Later, I'll give you uh, more details about the processes while I uh, present my proposed extension model. According to RAM, uh, the items are represented as vectors of features. Uh, the item features are positive integers sampled from a geometric distribution. According to the model, encoding uh, to memory is a probabilistic and er error-prone process. In a recognition test, the probe is compared to all the memory traces. The likelihood ratio of a match is calculated for each memory trace by the comparison between the features of the probe and the memory trace. The average of the likelihood ratios uh, of the memory traces gives the odds ratio of the probe. The odds ratio is compared to the decision criterion, and the decision is made. With these mechanisms, RAM model explains some major findings in the recognition literature based on accuracy scores. However, it doesn't explain the course of decision making and do not predict response times for the recognition tests. Some extensions to RAM model was proposed to explain the dynamics of decision making. Yet, there were no follow-up studies to dis uh, discover how well they can account for the uh, response time findings in the recognition studies. That means the full scope of the explanatory power of RAM model has yet to be discovered. This is why I proposed a novel RAM uh, variant with a dynamic decision-making mechanism. The model is called Retrieving Dynamically and Effectively from Memory, or DRAM in short. The representation, encoding, and retrieval calculations uh, are the same as the original RAM, However, it includes a sequential sampling mechanism for the decision-making phase. Firstly, uh, the model assumes that items are represented as vectors of uh, features. The numbers of uh, features in a vector is determined by the parameter w. The item features are positive in integers, samples from a geometric distribution with the parameter g. In the graph, uh, you can see that the uh, probability density uh, of the sampled integers in uh, two uh, G values. Uh, lower G values cause uh, greater probabilities of sampling bigger numbers. Uh, low frequent bursts, which are created by lower G values, include higher values in general. Uh, when the items are studied, an incomplete and erroneous copy of a trace is created in the memory. For each item feature, the feature value is encoded uh, to memory with the probability U. And when it's encoded, it is encoded correctly with the probability of C. In case of incorrect encoding, a value is sampled from the G distribution. A value of zero represents an uh, empty feature in a memory trace. In each recognition test trial, the item features of the memory traces are activated gradually. In each time step, the item features are activated with the probability of P, and they are holding the buffer. Thus, the number of the act, uh, activated item features gradually increase in each time step. The Bayesian likelihood, ratio, uh, likelihood of a test item being a target is calculated using the active uh, item features, which are held in the buffer. When the probe is compared to each memory trace, all the item features in the probe is compared to the corresponding active features of the memory traces. The likelihood ratio of a memory trace is comp uh, the compound probabilities of the item feature likelihoods. The odds ratio uh, of the probe is the natural logarithm of the average likelihoods. It is calculated in each time step uh, with the currently active item features in the buffer. 
there are two uh, decision boundaries for yes and uh, no uh, response options. The boundary separation is determined by the parameter A. A value is the boundary of uh, yes decision, while minus A is the boundary of no decision. The accumulation of evidence continues until it reaches the yes or no decision boundaries. The starting point of evidence accumulation is determined by the parameter Z. A value of zero indicates an unbiased position. The O ratio is added to the starting point value. An important issue in dynamic decision models is that there should be a stopping rule if a decision cannot be made for a long time. The solution uh, is to resort to converging decision boundaries in time. Uh, since the boundary separation represents the caution of the decision maker, it is reasonable to assume that as time passes, the caution will be put aside gradually to reach a decision. If we assume that the current uh, response caution is related to the prospect of upcoming information, as the estimated proportion of active features in the buffer increase, the boundaries collapse. This will re result in an S-shaped boundary decrease as in the uh, graph. Uh, and such decrease can be formulated as in the equation on the screen. It is an arbitrary formula based on the sigmoid function, which can be changed if uh, considered necessary. There are two important values in this equation. First, it includes an uh, omega parameter, which determines how early the uh, boundaries begin to converge. Uh, second, phi value is a scaling parameter for the steepness of decrease in the boundary. The model assumes that we learn from testing experiences, so the memory is updated after each decision. There are two decision options. When a probe is recognized, uh, the memory trace, the active features of which best matches to the probe, is updated. So the memory trace with the maximum likelihood value at the decision point is updated. The empty features of the memory trace are learned with the probabilities of U test and C. When the probe is rejected, a new memory trace is added to the memory with the same encoding probabilities. Uh, lastly, the model uh, includes a non-decision time or extra time parameter XT. The non-decision time is added to the decision time, which gives the response time prediction for that trial. These are the basics of the uh, DRAM models. I've been working for the model uh, for a few months, but uh, and uh, built the uh, model on R software. Uh, after that, I have begun to discover how the model uh, works, try to find the optimal range uh, of the parameter values, which result in realistic performance estimations. Once this uh, process started to reveal satisfactory results, I began to model fitting procedures to empirical data. I'd like to talk about my findings. First, I manipulated the G value while the other parameters are fixed. Uh, as I told you uh, before, uh, the G value is related to the word frequency. As G increases, the hit rate increases and false alarm decreases, which reveals the classical word frequency mirror effect. Moreover, as G increases, the responses are made faster, as was observed in the literature. How the model accounts for the uh, word frequency effect will be tested by a model uh, fitting procedure to empirical data. The parameter U determines the probability of encoding to memory. Increasing U uh, causes uh, higher hit rates and lower false alarm rates together with fast, uh, faster responses. These indicate uh, that the uh, parameter U captures the effects of the uh, strength manipulations. Uh, yet, this should be further demonstrated with uh, comparisons to empirical data, which will be done in the further stages uh, of the study. In the previous uh, studies using RAM model, the encoding strength in test was uh, generally different from the uh, study strength. This is related to the steep decrease in performance during a recognition test. Uh, our, in our simulations, uh, increasing the encoding strength in test results down in an emphasized output interference. As the serial position of the test item increased, the sensitivity decreased, and the decrease in performance was steeper uh, than the U test value has uh, was higher. Uh, Z determines the starting point of a decision. This parameter is related to the response bias manipulations with the chains of the uh, base rates of the test list. As the decision maker is biased to one of the response options, that option is made more often and also faster than the other. The parameter A represents the boundary separation, which is related to the response caution. As the boundary separation uh, increased, the responses became slower but more accurate, which reveals a classical speed accuracy trade-off pattern. P 
is the probability of activation of an item feature in the memory. This parameter operates as a scaling factor in that it increases or decreases all the response time to the same degree. In simulations, uh, the omega value is changed between three levels. These values are prospective time steps in which the proportion of active item features reach to 70%, 80%, and 90% respectively. Uh, this was done to discover whether there is an optimal percentage to be fixed in order to eliminate this parameter. The simulations demonstrated that as omega decreased, responses tend to be faster, and the positively skewed shape uh, of the uh, response time distribution is more em emphasized. Uh, the optimization of this parameter and the boundary convergence rule is still ongoing. Uh, and the same goes for the uh, y parameter. Uh, which determines the steepness of decrease in the boundaries. In simulations, higher values increase the probability of faster responses and also spread the time scale of the slower responses. Moreover, smaller y values tend to create bumps at the omega point on the R uh, distribution, since uh, there are more unfinished decisions until the omega time step. The optimization of parameter y seems especially important in the model procedures, which will be made in the future. Uh, since the uh, parameter value substantially changes the shape of the uh, response time distributions. Uh, what I have demonstrated was about uh, how the parameters operate. Now I will show you the preliminary, preliminary results of the uh, model fitting procedures to experimental data. For the standard yes-no recognition test data, I used the uh, chi-square method recommended by Radcliffe and colleagues. First, I used the data of a standard yes no recognition test uh, taken from a study carried out in our. The gray bars on the figure demonstrate the response times in the experiment. Uh, the red bars demonstrate the uh, model predictions of the best fitting simulation and, until now. The observed frequencies per block are very close, but uh, the quantile predictions are significantly different, as can be seen in the graph. I like to note that the model fitting process is at the very early stage now. We were able to try only a small set of parameter values. An important limitation of ours is that the simulations take a lot of time, uh, which slows down the research. Since the buffer, which consists of thousands of item features, is updated in each time step, the model simulations uh, re require a lot of computing power. We are currently searching for our options to deal, deal with this issue. Uh, so the model fitting uh, process is still ongoing. In the recognition task with the response deadline procedure, the response time is determined by a signal. The, response, uh, the time of the response signal is manipulated in this task so that the uh, speed accuracy trade-off is revealed. For the response deadline procedure, I have used Kulish and Oestekin's study data. In their experiment, the response lag and the memory strength was manipulated. Uh, in the model simulations with the response deadline procedure, the stopping time is determined by a re response signal. If the uh, signal comes before a decision is made, the decision of uh, the boundary of which is closer to the current evidence is true. Uh, the boundaries do not converge uh, as the subject uh, doesn't need to be less cautious to respond. Following these assumptions, the model simulations reveal these results. Uh, the model predicts an exponential uh, growth in sensitivity as a function of time. The preliminary results are especially good for sensitivity. The model fit, uh, fitting procedures are uh, also ongoing for this. DRAM model was proposed to uh, provide a reliable account for the course of decision making and investigate the RAM framework's explanatory powers simultaneously for accuracy and response time data. Uh, of recognition memory experiments. The preliminary results of the study is promising, uh, but there's still much work to be done, uh, as I often noted the future directions of the current projects. The model is expected to explain the targeted findings that are previously noted by its main mechanisms, rather than freely varying parameter values. Therefore, finding the best uh, fitting parameter values for the data is a secondary concern. These are the main goals, but the success of the model will show uh, to what extent these goals are, are reached. That was my presentation. Uh, here are my re main references. 
Thank you for listening to me. I would like to listen to your feedbacks and suggestions if there are any. Please reach me by this uh, email address if you like.